Hello, 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 and welcome back to Dark Souls 3. I'm showing you guys exactly how I run through the game, giving any tips and tricks that I might have towards playing it and making it a little bit easier on yourself. So, what are we going to do now? We are going to raise the banner right here that we got from the old lady in the end of the last episode. That will trigger the demons to rise up, and they're going to actually grab us, and they're going to carry us down to the undead settlement. Light the fir very first bonfire here, and we're going to run over here. Grab that extra soul. Can't go wrong with souls. And we've got to encounter our first random NPC here. Jump off this. Gonna give both of these dogs a nice thrusting attack, fully charged up. And we've got to go over here and talk to this fellow here. Please grant me death. <laughs> uh -oh. Do I it? I I don't want to spoil his dialogue for you guys, so I'm going to skip through that. If you guys really want to experience that in your own playthrough, go ahead and listen to his dialogue. It's pretty interesting. But he uh, he will give us five free level ups. It will cost us no souls whatsoever. All we have to do is talk to him after dying a few times. And each time you die a couple times, he's going to like give you an extra level. Up until you have five of them. Can let those dogs run in there and attack all those random guys and let you slide right on past. And we're going to go ahead and rest since I already used an Estus Flask. Might as well. Okay. Now we're moving into the actual part of the undead settlement here. And I've got three black fire bombs. Let me put those on. Nice, he just dropped me a firebomb. That's excellent. Roll into that body right there to make it fall down and then grab the small leather shield. It's a pretty decent parry shield. It's super lightweight as well. So it won't weigh you down. We're going to thrust this... So uh, shit, I can't English. We're going to thrust that body to the ground. Come around here. And grab this... Rusted coin. Oh, wait, no, it's not a rusted coin. It's repair powder. I don't know why I thought that was a rusted coin. Now, if you're new, you'll come back in here and grab these right here, just so you can use those later on for the next boss. And then we're just going to walk right off of this. Grab the body. And we're going to firebomb these barrels. Killing those three guys there. And firebomb those. Killing those two guys there. Watch out for her spell, because that will bleed you if it hits you. We just want to get her away from the uh, tree over there. What we're going to do is run right past her. Run past that spell, grab this body, which is an Estus Shard. We're also going to grab this one, which is an Ember. And then we're going to grab this one right here, which is another Titanite. Now, we'll run right through these guys right here. And go straight in this door. Knock that body down. Grab this charcoal pine resin which is just like the gold pine resin we used last game or last video on the last boss except it does fire damage instead of lightning damage which is pretty good now we're going to open this door here after grabbing the sunlight covenant make sure if you guys don't want to run way of the blue here that you go ahead and switch that to this warriors of sunlight so you can start earning sunlight metals, but if you don't care about sunlight metals or getting any faith spells, then don't worry about it. Just keep on way of the blue. I'm not going to be using any faith on this character, at least not right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. 
And then we're going to come back over here and go across this bridge here. Go in here and we're going to clear out all these guys. Grab this soul. And this enemy right here, if he drops his sword, guys, you get extremely lucky. That sword is super rare, but it's actually one of the most powerful early game weapons. So if you want to farm an enemy for a really good early game weapon, go ahead and kill that guy right there over and over again. Might take you a while, but it is possible. All right, we're going to grab that round shield, and then we're going to run across this bridge and then jump off the side so that we don't explode. Because those guys up there blow up those barrels. Kill that guy and grab us another Titanite shard. And if you're low on Estus, we've got ourselves another bonfire right here. Go ahead and rest up at that, get full health and everything. I don't think I'm going to need this gold pine resin or that firebomb right now, so we're going to just throw on our charcoal resin. And we're going to come up here. Now, if you are someone who does PvP, you may want to go ahead and firebomb that body down right there. Because this spear is incredibly good in PvP for a spear. It's by no means the longest spear or the most powerful, but its moveset is underestimated as hell in the PvP community. It's super solid. Alright, now up here is an NPC who will teach you pyromancy. Just talk to him and he'll go back to Firelink Shrine for you. <laughs> All right, now we drop down here where those exploding barrels are and we're going to grab a really quick soul right here and then run over here and grab a fire clutch ring. This will boost all fire damage that you deal, but in return it also makes you a little bit squishy, like it makes your defenses go down quite a bit. So I highly recommend until you're used to the game and the dodging mechanic that you not really use the ring. Um, but if you are a pyromancer, it's just another way to get your spells and your other weapons to do a lot of fire damage, so remember that. I'm gonna go down here, and this will actually open up a shortcut. So by going the way that we went, we did zero backtracking, and we've opened up now two more bonfires. So just go straight through this tunnel. Make sure you grab this item here, the Sastus. Most people call it the Castus, but I'm pretty sure it's called the Sastus. I'm pretty sure that's the proper way to say it. And we can throw that on our left hand alternate slot. And what that allows us to do is we can either two hand them and use them as a fist weapon to punch people, which is really, really good. Uh, you can use the weapon art to make yourself unstaggerable for a few seconds so you can beat the crap out of someone and they won't be able to stagger you, which is kind of nice. But the main thing I like to use it for is when I'm fighting with my sword, I can use it one-handed to throw out a cheeky parry. And a lot of the time people won't notice it, so it's really handy for that. Now, let's go ahead and throw ourselves a fire bomb right in there. Kill one of those rats and aggro the big one. The rat's not too big to deal with, so don't super worry about him. But fighting all three of them at the same time can be a little sketchy sometimes if you're new. So just beware. And we're going to go up here. Open up this shortcut, which only opens from this side. And rest at the bonfire. Now, we have to do just a little tiny bit of backtracking over here just to gather a couple more Titanite shards. Don't worry about in getting evaded by that guy. He's not super, super, super aggressive when it comes to following you. He kind of likes to chill around this area. 
Now, killing that crystal lizard right there will drop you a sharp gem. If you're on a dexterity only build, that will make all of your weapons scale with dexterity incredibly high. So that's very good for dex weapons. If you're using the katana from the Firelink Shrine, uh, highly recommend putting a sharp gem on it. it. Makes it do a ton of damage. Thrust her into a backstab. Into another wake up thrust. Taking her down with our plus two sword. Oh, and she dropped her hat and her weapon. That's actually a pretty rare drop. This is an ultra great hammer, or an ultra weapon as I call them. It is very slow, but very hard hitting. And this particular one will deal bleeding damage, which isn't super good nowadays because they nerfed bleeding so bad, but it's still usable. It's still fun. It looks cool too. So keep that in mind. If you want to farm for that weapon, you got to kill those bigger ladies. I would prefer myself to kill this guy right here and get his wooden mallet. It's kind of hard to get it. I think it's like a super low drop rate, but it's there if you want to farm him. His wooden hammer isn't the most powerful weapon, but with a heavy gem on it, it scales incredibly good with strength and does solid enough damage. So keep that in mind as well if you're on a strength build. It's got a unique moveset as well because of the weapon art, so. I'm gonna kill this guy, grab this whip. I think it's just the regular standard whip. Yep. And one more item. Unless there's something in here, I can't remember. Yeah, nothing in here. Okay, so we just go right over here to this red-eyed guy. We're gonna slide through the crack between these two buildings. And we're gonna grab this soul here, and then just walk off the ledge. There we go. Now let's head back to the bonfire. Now, if you used your Ring of Sacrifice that you got in Episode 1 because you died, then what you can do is you could come over here, face the building, run, and jump, and grab yourself a Rusted Coin. I thought that was a Ring of Sacrifice. I'm tripping. Uh, well, never mind. Forget what I was going to say. The Rusted Coins are used for farming. They give you a faster, or not a faster, but they give you a higher percentage to get uh, more rare items dropped from enemies' bodies when you kill them. So, if you're trying to farm any weapon or any item from any enemy, uh, that makes it a little bit easier on you. Now, we're going to go ahead and take out Hodrick here. He's going to try to parry me. He got his shield out. Anytime he gets his shield out, he's probably going to throw a parry out on you. Now he's using power within. That will actually sap his HP. Oh, but now he's casting warmth, which will constantly regenerate his HP. I'm going to go ahead and roll down here. Just so they have to go around. That'll give me a little extra time to deal with the big guy. Which I'll go ahead and use one of these charcoal resins for. Alright, now we can use Hodrick's warmth over here to stand in and just get our health back while we fight him. He went ahead and used an Estus, so we're just going to heal up with his warmth. By doing that uppercut swing, he tries to parry it too early and allows us to get a free hit on him while he tries to parry. He just moved his warmth as well, because I think he's out of Estus. Yeah, he is. He just tried to heal and doesn't have any. So keep pressuring him to keep him away from the warmth. And if we need to, we can back off and get a quick heal from it.
Oh, I thought I could outspace that. Alright. I played that a little too cautious for my own tastes, but I was just kind of giving you guys an idea of the safest way to fight them. That way, I know a lot of people have trouble with some of the uh, NPCs, so it's no biggie. Just, just take your time, try to outspace him, use the techniques that I've showed. You guys can do it. I believe in you. Don't give up. There ain't no reason to give up in this game. It's not that difficult. It might be challenging at first, but once you get used to the mechanics and how everything works, you will see the way the game wants you to play it. Like, it's not going to pl be played the way that you think you should play it. It's you got to play the game the way it wants you to play it. That's one thing about From Software games you have to learn. But we're going to go over there and grab that body right there, which gives us the ashes of the mortician's ashes, I believe. Which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the mortician's ashes gives you the ability to purchase the charcoal pine resin. So now we can purchase and buy fire resin whenever we want. So now we're going to go in here. We're going to run up here. Now, if you are a dex build, jump over there and get that item. Because that is a... Oh, whoops. That hit me through the wall. Uh, if you run over there and you get that item, it is a uh, great scythe, which scales with dexterity, but it deals blunt damage. It doesn't say that it deals blunt damage, but if you look in the game files, in the game files, it literally says it deals blunt damage, even though the description of it says it deals slashing damage. So it's a dex weapon that deals blunt damage, so it's pretty rare. Uh, I had to finish off my water, and now I'm going to crack open some caffeinated stuff. Keep me going here. Alrighty. Now, through that door right there is the boss. You don't have to fight this boss now. Like a lot of players might think you do. Have to fight him right now. But uh, that is not the case. 100% not the case. So, for right this second, we're actually going to not fight him. We're going to come over here and kill this dog. And we're going to grab this ember here. And strafe around the outside of this, just so we don't get aggroed by that lady. Go ahead and aggro this dog, and then do the normal strap. We're going to, going to just block the dog, and then R1, R1. Watch out for this guy, and then bam, bam. Okay, now, we're back over here where we were earlier. That's the tunnel that leads to the shortcut to the bonfire. And now we've got this bridge here. Okay, we're going to grab this ember. Dodge and dodge. And then run. Just haul ass. You want to get up here and get to this door. Do not turn your camera around. If you turn your camera around, the enemies will follow you actually faster. And usually if you don't turn your camera around, one of the guys, he'll despawn. Like he'll, or not despawn, but he won't aggro on you. So as long as we keep our camera facing this direction, don't look at them. Okay, Onion Bro will then get off the elevator. And what we're going to do is we're going to send the elevator down and then roll back. Looks like one of these guys followed us anyway, so it doesn't matter at this point. He'll just constantly stay in limbo right there. And we're going to take this elevator up. Now that we sent the other one down, it pulls us a secret elevator that goes up. And we're going to go over here and grab this soul. Now, the main reason to come up here with the secret elevator is this giant right here. He is the guy that shot us with that giant arrow down there earlier. So, now that we've befriended him, he won't shoot us anymore. Uh, and he has multiple trees that he protects. So now that he's befriended us, 
we can get hmm. him to help us out in the future. Now, on your way down, you're going to see this platform right here with this little lamp on it. You want to jump off the elevator and land right here. And I highly recommend if you're new, you go ahead and throw on a gold pine resin if you still have one. And we're going to go out here and talk to the onion. Just spam through his dialogue. And we're going to go straight down here. Now, he warned us not to go down here because there's a demon. Well, we're thick-headed and we don't like to listen to people, so... We're gonna go ahead and jump down here and pop our gold pine resin. And we're gonna fight this demon. Now, be careful while fighting this demon. You don't want to accidentally hit the onion bro, because he's gonna come and help you. Now, when you kill him, he always drops a fire gem that puts fire damage on your sword, but it gets rid of your scaling, so you're not going to have any strength or dexterity or faith or intelligence scaling on your weapon anymore. So, depending on what your stats are, it might do more damage overall, but later on when you leveled up your strength and dex, it might actually end up doing less damage. So I don't recommend using fire gems or deep gems at all. It just, it's just kind of a waste in my opinion. But definitely make sure that you cut this body right here down and grab that pale tongue. You need that for a quest. And this right here, if you started as the warrior you already have, but it's the Northern Armor set. Okay. We're going to go over here. Grab this. And I'm going to make my way up to the top of this building. Give me just a second though. I'm going to mute my microphone while I run up here. So once you get up to the roof, run past those two big women there. We're going to grab the Flynn's ring here. And drop down right here on the side of this roof. And jump straight over here so that we don't take a shit ton of fall damage and kill ourselves. And then right here. And inside this crate... It's one of the best early game rings that you can access without having someone drop you a ring. It makes your stamina regenerate just a little bit faster, which is pretty solid. And we're going to go ahead and put on the blood bite ring as well. Not that anything else bleeds you or anything this early game, but it, it will help you ever so slightly in the future. Because when we head to the deacons area, they're going to have a lot of guys that bleed you. Okay, so now we've actually made our way back over here to where the tree boss is. Um, whoops, did I have another resin? Yes, I do. Charcoal resin. All right, so before we fight this, we're going to go ahead and rest at a bonfire. So let's go do that real quick. I was going to homeward bone, but then I realized we can literally just run straight over here and use this bonfire that we've already got. All you need to do is run right past this fella here, hang a left, and roll straight off the ledge right here. And boom, we've got ourselves a bonfire. We've also got 20,000 souls right now, so 
If I were you guys, I would definitely head back to Firelink Shrine, level up with all the souls that you've collected, and go ahead and get yourself some extra stats, whether it be in health or strength or dexterity. Just get your health up and get your damage up a little bit. Um, if you have enough Titanite Shards, go ahead and go and level up your weapon again, all that good jazz, and we're going to start this fight. I'm actually going to throw on those two bundles that we collected earlier. Okay. So the boss does not aggro immediately. He's that giant tree right there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take out these guys right here. Just a few of them. Until the boss aggros. Okay, the boss just aggroed, so we're going to use our charcoal pine bundle. Whoops. All right, my second hit didn't hit him for some reason. Charcoal pine bundle, though. And spam him right in his nuts right there. After you've broken his central sacks, go for the one on his thigh right there. Oh, he's already started phase two. Well, hell, that's a lot earlier than normal. I'm gonna go back here on his backhand. Knock that off. Pop another charcoal bundle. Knock that one off. Go over here. Knock his thigh one off. And then we're going to thrusting attack his hand. And he's dead. Grab these items. Light the fire. Wait for the souls to appear. There they go. 7,700 souls. And killing that boss awards you the Transposing Kiln. What that lets you do is it lets you create the boss weapons from any of the souls that you've collected from bosses that you've killed. We're going to head back to Firelink Shrine. Now. The order in which I would do this is definitely to go first to the blacksmith. I'm gonna go ahead and I can't level my sword, so that's all I really needed to know. I'm gonna look at my infusions though. We do have a refined gem, which will take the dexterity scaling from a D to a C, and it will take the current strength scaling of a C to a slightly better C. We're going to lose some of our base damage, but our scaling damage, which is the plus 40 you can see right there, it will go up. It'll actually almost double. It goes from 25 to 40. So we're losing a little bit of total damage, but getting a, a higher bonus modifier damage because of our scaling going up. So if you're going to keep leveling strength and dexterity, I highly recommend putting this on. If you're not going to level both, though, don't worry about it. Now, reinforce our Estus, and now we have seven. I'm going to run back over here, though, to the Maiden. Since we've got a little extra souls, we're going to give her the Mortician's Ashes. Now she sells a few extra items, like these embers here. If you need these embers, go ahead and purchase those. I highly recommend it if you need them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and purchase this grave key and the dried finger right here next to the summit sign. Go ahead and grab that. That's going to be for PvP, but I like to go ahead and grab it. Ashen one. And the rest of our souls in our inventory we can now pop. You can also sell them to the handmaiden, which is a little bit faster, so you can always do that. You don't have to do what I'm doing right here and pop them. But uh, I didn't have that many, so I wasn't super worried about it. Okay, pop all those, and we're leveling up. Um, at this point, I would say it's probably pretty safe to go ahead and get your health up to 20. And then, whichever stat you want, want to wield at this point. Because now we've got 16-16. No matter what, in my opinion, you should always get both strength and dex to 16 as a minimum standard keep those at 16 16 strength because you can wield uh the medium shields and the somewhat better shields 
uh, without having to worry about your strength being too low. And dexterity for the same purpose. Certain weapons require a little bit of dexterity. Certain shields require a little bit of dexterity. So by having a 16-16 on both of them, you can wield almost everything that's worth wielding. Now, you have to make the choice. Do you level both of these, or do you primarily focus on one after this point? So... It, it doesn't truly matter, it's up to you, but it does determine what weapons that you will have access to. I personally think for this video, I'm going to stick to the smaller weapon side of things and show you guys why I prefer smaller weapons. So we're probably going to level Dex, so we'll go ahead and bump that up to 18. Now, before progressing to the next area, there's a couple things we got to do. Talk to this guy, just completely obliterate through his di dialogue here okay he gives you a heavy gem if you've killed the tree which we just did now that is the opposite of a sharp gem that makes your weapon scale with strength primarily so remember that okay he doesn't say anything else for now after getting the heavy gem but we've got to go ahead and talk to this guy here who gives you cracked red eye orbs which allows you to invade another person's world so that you can kill them, Use them to pillage. What else are it's basically the pvp mechanic of this game now he wants us to come back after we've pillaged another world well we already picked up that uh pale tongue if you guys remember it's right here the pale tongue we got that from that body in the undead settlement so now we don't even have to go pillage a world we can just tell him we did and not actually do it since we already have the pale tongue now here we got to talk to yol of londor and we want to draw out our true strength which begins our hollowing process you get one free level. So we're going to go ahead and bump that up to dexterity of 19 and go ahead and level. Now, as soon as you do that, you're going to go into your status screen here and see underneath your level, there's nothing there. It just says level 27 and then there's nothing directly under it. Well, the first time you die, something is going to appear right there. So let's go ahead and run up here. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little bit heavier. Let's put on some weapons. There we go. That makes me fat roll. And real quick, check and see if killing Hodrick gave you a seed right here. It did not give me one. And what we're going to do is use this little staircase right here. And we're just going to jump off and kill ourselves. Now, what that does is now underneath our level, there should be a new stat. Yep, right there. Underneath level 27, it says hollowing one. That means we have now died one time and our hollowing has begun to build. The more you die, the more your hollowing builds up. So we're gonna grab our souls and we're gonna do it again. Now, after you've done it two times, my hollowing is now at two. Go back over here, talk to Yol, and draw out your true strength again. Now, he's giving us another free level. So now, every time we die, instead of getting one hollowing, we're now going to earn two hollowing. So now what we've got to do is we've got to kill ourselves, I think, two more times. So we'll run straight back up here, grab our souls, and then yeet ourselves off. Let's see if that worked. Yep, our hollowing went from two to now four. And let's do it one more time. Yeet. <laughs> I 
Alright, if I'm not mistaken, we can go ahead and talk to him again. I, then shall we be now each time we die, we are going to get... Be safe. Three hollowing per death. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your hollowing up to 20. Uh, as soon as you get it to 20, you've unlocked all of the available free levels. And Yol down there, he's actually going to die after you uh, get all of your hollowing. He's, he's going to be assassinated. And someone is going to go down there where he should be and take his place. And uh, that's what that's how you know you have triggered the next section of the uh, quest line is by him dying and Yuria of Londor will take his place down there. So we'll do this a couple more times. This is the easiest, fastest way to do it. I mean, you can go to Undead Settlement at the very first Undead Settlement bonfire and just jump off the cliff over and over right next to the fire. And it's... It's like slightly faster, but shit, you need to be here to talk to him anyway, so I don't see any reason why not to just do it here in the Firelink Shrine. Just kill yourself here. It's a lot easier. Okay, after that one, we should have enough to talk to him for one more level. Shall we bear up? Then shall we begin bear? Okay, he actually was able to give me two more now, so we'll go ahead and get it. Ah. Oh. Be safe. He says we've obtained ample strength, and if you'll now look up at the top uh, of my health bar there, where everything is. You can now see that that symbol is all grayed out and changed. That is how you know you have completed it. So now that we've obtained ample strength and that's all looking crazy up there on that symbol, we're gonna homeward bone back to the shrine, even though we're already here. And what that does is it completely resets everything and resets the area, resets the dialogue for the NPCs and everything. And now we gotta go grab our souls real quick. Let me get this spear off of me so we're not fat rolling anymore from being too heavy. And now we go down here and talk to Yuria. Yol is dead, and here is Yuria. Now she will give you a emote and the ability to purchase the Londor Braille Tome. So go ahead and buy that since it only costs you 50 souls. And that's all we need her for right now. Uh, there will be more stuff later on, but for now that's all we need from her. And we got five levels out of it, so I'm not complaining. Now, talking to this guy after resetting the area with the homeward bone, he now thinks that we've invaded someone since we have a pale tongue. So now he gives us the key to the Dark Wraith in High Wall of Lothric. So now, before we progress any more forward, we're going to head back to the High Wall at the Tower on the Wall bonfire. Because there's two things we need to do before we progress any further. Now, when you first get here, I'm going to go ahead and ember up just so I can have that extra health. And we're going to drop right down here. And then instantly drop right down again. Now that we've got a little bit more strength and dex, we can actually, actually do a lot more damage to those guys right there. So simplified that a lot. And we're going to use that key that dude just gave us, and we're going to open that door and go down here. And down here is a very tough enemy. This enemy is no pushover, guys. If you're not ready for this, don't do it. No one's forcing you to do it right now. You've got the key, you've opened the door. You do not have to do it right now. 
You can come back here later when you're much more powerful and absolutely two-shot this guy. But, if you're like me, we're going to run up and we're going to backstab him. Get him with a wake-up thrust, which missed somehow, so now we got to be a little careful. Wait for the backstab, but he was too fast, so we'll just wait. Roll out of the way and grab another one. Get him with that wake up. And he drops us a non-cracked red eye orb. That one is infinite use. So now I don't have to worry about running out of these cracked ones he gave us because we've got a brand new one right here that's infinite use and we can invade people all day long with no worries. So if I want to be an absolute asshole, I can go into someone else's game while they're playing and just fucking kill them. Or at least attempt to. Make their life hell, you know. But, moving on, we're going to come right over here. Be careful for these exploding barrels, because this guy throws firebombs. Is he going to drop us any? Nope. Kill these two guys here. Grab the mail breaker here, and we're going to talk to a new NPC right down here, which we got the key to earlier from the area where we got our Estus Flask shard in this area. And that opens his cell. Now this is Grey Rat. He is an NPC who will basically become a merchant for you, and who's also a thief who goes to other areas and steals stuff and brings it back and sells it to you. So now that we've got him unlocked, and safely in Firelink Shrine, we've gotten the Red Eye Orb, and we are now completely done with the High Wall of Lothric area until uh, probably mid-game. We're going to have to come back here for one optional, or not optional, but one more boss that opens up an area for us. So We're not completely done here, but we are for a while. Um... So for now, we're going to go back to uh, the bonfire, and we're going to travel over to... Oh, whoops. I forgot these guys follow you. Can't rest at the bonfire if they follow you. Now, there we go. Now we're going to travel back over here to, I believe, the cliff underside bonfire is the closest one. We just killed the tree, and we are now headed towards the... Uh, what is it called? The Road of Sacrifices. We're going to go ahead and open that up. That is the next area that we're going to be heading to. Now, the safest thing to do right here is just kind of wait a second, give these guys a minute to, like, get moved over and out of the way so that they're not going to fuck us up. Because the last thing you want is to be chased by two dogs and a bunch of dudes and then those two guys over there with the big vases chasing after you. That's, that is not what you want all at once. <laughs> so just give them a second. Let them pass by, especially the dogs because the dogs are... Uh, fighting multiple dogs while fighting multiple enemies at the same time can be an absolute nuisance, especially if you're new. Not used to that much pressure. But they moved on, so let's move. Oh wait, I'm going the wrong way, I forgot. If I forgot that we had purchased the grave key from the uh, merchant lady from giving her the mortician's ashes in Firelink Shrine. We've unlocked the grave key for 1,500 souls, and that actually opens up a door right here in the rat tunnel next to the dilapidated bridge bonfire. So you guys can just run straight across the bridge up there at the bonfire and then drop down here and open this door. Now, in here is a few items and some skeleton enemies. The loincloth, which is the lightest leg armor in the entire game, and the shrine of Velka. Now she, the shrine of Velka will get rid of your hollowing. So that you don't look like a zombie anymore. Because I don't know if you guys saw your character after you become a hollow. But yeah, I look like a fucking zombie now. I don't look uh, I don't look normal. I don't look human anymore. Well, that's okay though. 
if you want to use that statue there, you can go ahead and make yourself look human again. It's not really worth the cost it in souls, though, in my opinion, because as soon as you die a few more times, you're going to look hollow again. It's just going to happen, so. Uh, but if you accidentally hit an NPC, and they're pissed off, and they're trying to kill you, and it was a complete accident, you did not mean to do it, you can come to that statue, and you can request absolution. And what that does is it resets all the NPCs that you've accidentally aggroed and makes them docile again. They're basically, you're paying the statue to give you forgiveness. And uh, that's the only time you'll ever come down here and use that statue, to be 100% honest. So, But anyway, we're going to come down here. We're going to jump straight up on this crystal lizard with a jumping attack. Which will knock him over and then we can poke him. That crystal lizard always drops you a heavy gem, so all you strength builds out there, you're welcome. This guy's not supposed to fall down. I don't know what the hell he's doing down here. Okay. Grab this titanite shard. Go ahead and heal. Don't grab this shard, just run to it. Wait for him to slam and then get a thrust into a couple attacks. He's almost dead. And grab this Titanite Shard as well. So now, before even moving to the next area of the game, we have a fully leveled sword if we wanted to. Because now we have seven Titanite Shards. So you only needed six more to get it to plus three. Um, this right here could be a little tricky. I don't think I have any fire bombs. I do not have fire bombs, but what I do have is throwing knives. So I got to be a little more accurate here. There's a body hanging up there. Got to back up a little bit. Hit that body with a throwing knife. And it drops you a blessed red and white shield. Now, if you picked up the bow earlier, you could have also just shot it with a bow and an arrow. Just make sure you go over here, equip your arrows before you put your bow on. Put your bow on if you have the stats for it. And two-hand it, and then use the bumper to aim. And you could have just aimed up there. Whoops, wrong button. You could have just aimed up there. Oh, I didn't put arrows on. I'm an idiot. And shot it down. But yeah. Simple as that. And the Blessed Shield will actually give you constant health regeneration. So if I just want to put that on and carry it, I now have a constant regeneration on my on my health bar up there. It's really, 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 really slow. But every single little bit helps. And you can always uh, bless other items and carry them as well to stack the effect. So I could also put a Blessed Gem on my sword and have double healing. And then I could also put on a ring that also gives me regen and another spell. So I could just stack a whole bunch of regen on my character. Constantly regenerate some health. Makes it super, super efficient. For not necessarily wasting your Estus all the time when you don't necessarily need to. You're only missing a tiny bit of health, you know. It's helpful. But anyway, we're going to grab that Saint's Talisman. And we're going to climb up here and unlock the... Faith Lady, the Miracle Lady. She's going to sell us all of the miracles, basically. Not all of them, but a vast majority of them. Miracles are spells that use faith as a catalyst or whatever. So, just talk to her, accept her service, and she will then go to Firelink Shrine. And now... Oops, hold on just a second. There we go. Okay, now talk to this fellow here. If you have accepted her service, then this guy will then uh, befriend you and help you out in the future if you ever need it. So that's very, very useful. Especially if you're playing this game offline and want some NPC summons. So now we've already been up, we've already killed the demon, we helped Onion Bro, and we befriended the giant. So now, after all that, we now want to go down the elevator. And this will lead us to the next area of the game. Okay. 
Okay. Now, this room right here is dangerous as fuck. But I'll show you a super easy way to almost guarantee yourself getting through here without being hit. Go ahead and top off your health bar if you're not fully heal healed right now. Uh, oh, excuse me, guys. Oh, excuse me. Uh, now, we're going to run in here. We're going to grab this and just run to the right. Oh, that's what you don't want. If he does that, just panic roll away. And then sprint straight towards the door and open it up. He doesn't usually do that lunge attack that quickly. He usually does a thrusting attack, which is really easy to just run past. But as long as you make your way straight to the door and open it up, he cannot actually follow you. So he cannot come over here whatsoever. But what we can do is I'll show you a nice little secret right here. Get him to aggro. He'll turn around like that, poke him in the butt, roll backwards. Let him turn around, poke him in the butt, roll backwards. And just rinse and repeat. Well, I'm stuck. And at this point, we've got so much health and we're embered that, like, having 20 vigor, it makes you feel like the enemies don't deal that much damage to you anymore. Just wait for him to turn around, though. And he will drop you another straight sword, which is what I'm wielding right now. But his is the Irithyll straight sword, and that actually does frostbite damage. Uh, which stacks on an enemy and makes his stamina come back slower. And it looks incredibly cool. Like, a lot of people will see this and be like, oh my god, I'm using that. That's how you usually know you're dealing with a new player, because they'll instantly be using this. So, it's not bad. It's not terrible. It, it definitely has its uses. It does really good frostbite as well. But it's not high enough damage for my tastes, so I'm not going to use it. But feel free to use it. Just make sure you level. I believe strength is its primary stat. I can't tell right now while it's unupgraded, but I'm pretty sure it scales a C in strength and a D in dexterity. So it's definitely a strength weapon. Or a more strength inclined weapon. And this area right here is the Road of Sacrifices, guys. So I will see you in the next episode where we will run through here and fuck shit up. And I'll show you all the little tidbits and secrets. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel to see the next episode of this little walkthrough guide. And I will see you guys then. Thank you so much.